we're over. Yes, over and finished are the same word. Look it up in the dictionary. Are you thick as well as fat? Jesus. Hi, word to your mum, it's me, Keith Lemon again. Um, hope you're having a nice time. Today, what I'm doing, if you don't know what I'm doing, is I'm looking back uh, when I did Keith Lemon's Very Brilliant World Tour, when I had blonde, blonde hair, um, I used to wear a lot of fake tan. The simple reason was back in the day when we did this, there was no makeup, there was no stylist. That's why I didn't look as stylish as I do now. Um, yeah, makeup wise, I thought if I just put some fake tan on, that'll make me look like I've got makeup on. And um, it was an incredible time doing it though. Sometimes I teared up. This next episode we're gonna look at is when we went to Australia. Um, now that was lovely because I got to hang out with Holly Valance. Um, I, I went to see Paul Robinson on Air's Rock in Uluru. Um, and you, could, you couldn't climb up it then. You used to be able to climb up a bit. You, you couldn't then, I don't know if you can now. And, um, but yeah, when, I can remember when we first went there, a lot of flies. And I got these, um, remember these Blunderstone boots? I effing loved these boots. And um, I didn't wear them for a, a couple of months. I thought, I fancy wearing those Blunderstones again. And the sole just rotted away. I was very distraught, but there's a good shot of them. Um, let's see them in action as we watch episode two of Keith Lemon's Very Brilliant World Tour. Just press play, it's over here on this monitor. This is me. This is taken from Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. And um, that's what I'm kind of spoofing there. That's why I'm dressed as a, a drag queen, I guess. Let's cut into it. comfortable dressed like this, Troy. I don't want to be pursued as a transvestite. I mean, what's connection anyway? That Guy Pierce film, they shot it out here. I don't even know Guy Pierce is, and I've definitely never heard of a film called Sue Stellar Queen at Desert. Is it a normal sexual film? Because I feel like one. We should have done Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. That's much more Australian. <laughs> We're in Australia. <laughs> Flicking flies, they're doing me head in. Cheers. My name's Keith Lemon, businessman of the year 93, inventor of the security port. I'm about to embark on a very brilliant world tour, touring around the world, whilst my cousin Gary looks after me business. My next door neighbour Roy is filming the whole thing using a video camera and some tapes. Why my face scribbled out? Shut up Roy, I'm finished voiceover. What is this programme? It's Keith Lemon's very brilliant world tour. In this, the second instalment of my world tour following my shark-shaped flight plan, I'm in Australia, situated near the shark's back foot. I'll be meeting up with Stephen Dennis from Neighbours, mounting a bushman's big croc, and having a ooh-ah with the bang-tidy Oliver Lance. Are you thick as well as fat? Jesus! Here I am in Sydney, in front of one of Sydney's most famous assets. The Sydney Opera the House. Architecturally, it was well ahead of its time, back when architecture was not so ahead of its time. Just getting it built took years of pioneering technical engineering that was pioneering and ahead of its time. Some say that its creamy concrete wings are reminiscent of the sails of the First Fleet. To me, it looks more like a collection of eggshells than chicken beaks. Apparently, it was going to be in the form of a, a millennium dome, but they put it together wrong, hence its jagged edges. Why, <laughs> someone made a cock-up, didn't they? A <laughs> right cock-up. As well as koala bears and Henry from Neighbours, Australia is also famous for its many beaches. So quicker than Crocodile Dundee could say, that ain't a knife, this is a knife, I partake in as many beach activities available to me. Firstly, surfing boarding. Let's go surfing now, everybody's learning how. Come on, it's a party with me. Let's go surfing now, everybody's learning how. Come on, 
nine to five. Let's go surfing now. I was extraordinarily very brilliant. Nextly, beach balling. As usual, I picked the activity up instantaneously to a level of excellence. Bang tidy, aren't they? There's a lot of bang tidy birds in Australia. In fact, I used to go out with one. Don't know if you're familiar with um, Oliver Lance from Neighbours, and she did that song. I want to kiss, kiss your mouth, mouth. Went out with her. Oh yeah. Keith, sweetheart, can you put on a couple more shrimp? Imagine Harold are coming around later. Oh, and this old um, wonky got Ellen Daniels coming round as well. And is she going to bring a trifle or a casserole? Are you mad, you? There's no such person as an actor. And here's a new splash for you. Bouncer didn't really call Bouncer. He's called Paul. And he's a little midget in a dog suit. You know that because he comes down here on Tuesdays to play cards. You're not on Neighbours anymore. And for one minute and a half, can you stop this unconvincing Australian accent? Struth. Now go get me another stabby, mate. You've got me doing it now. Go get me another beer, you fat cow. Bye, you're carrying some timber. You've let yourself go, you. You have. Why are you being like this? Like what? I've been like, oh. Hi, Jim. Yeah, it's Flick. Listen, can you come around? Ollie. I'm really worried Ollie. about Ollie. You better not be talking to Jim Robinson. There's no such person. He's an actor that disappeared and reappeared on ugly freaking Betty. Now drop this neighbor's facade or me and you, we're finished. What are you saying? We're over. Yes, over and finished are the same word. Look it up in the dictionary. Are you thick as well as fat? Jesus! And don't you dare press that tape recorder. If you put that music on, that's it. I get a bat in the face. Don't you put that music on. Neighbors, everybody needs good neighbors. Just a friendly wage boy. That's it, Oliver Lance. Me and boy. you, the detour. Bye, it was a blast from the past, that backflash. Mad as a bag of spaniels, Oliver Lance, but as tidy as you like, a proper spinner. Australians couldn't give a forex for any other beer. Myself, I'll forex in drink out, and later that evening, I return to my hotel pissed as a fart. Oh, flicking out. Where's the camera on? Hello, I'm a bit drunk. Next morning, I woke up, bushy-eyed and bright-tailed, because it's very rare that I get an hangover, to present the next part of the show, which is a bit like the Really Wild Show, but instead of Michaela Strachan, who as a child I right fancied until I discovered Samantha Fox, who is now a mad lesbian, we had Bilbo Baggins' his brother, Bruce Baggins. We got up close and personal with big birds with old man's toenails on their heads. <laughs> Giant Australian rabbits called kangaroos. Here's the testicle here, dangling around, and that's his penis. Dirty snakes with a bite more poisonous than if you drink Tipex. Oh, oh, oh. And of course, a member of the Diplodocus family, the only dinosaur still in existence, the teeth-riddled crocodile. That's why I don't want to pick him up. He's just pissed all over you. That's right. Have you ever been pissed on by a crocodile before? No. Come on. We can't run anywhere, can we? Bruce wanted me Come to on. sit on the beast. I was more frightened than a vet fielding, trapped in a haunted house full of poltergosts. I can then actually put my fingers in his mouth if I like. Why well, come he's not slamming down on you? Oh, jeez. I, I, I see him getting the slam for you. You're not going to play, though, are you? That's a bit of a gamble, that, isn't it, though? Come on. 
Kibbutz. 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 If this was last show, I'd sit on it, but we've got to go to Mexico. I thought we were laughing for Roy. Well, who else are you going to get to do this? Andy Crane. Why is he not coming down? Because I'm not flapping my hand. See, if I put the piece of meat in his mouth, put it in, other than what I slapped before, he eats it, that's so that's right. not very predictable. He eats no. it. Oh, well, he's got to eat it. That was the sound of a T-Rex. If I want to walk past him, I touch his eyes with my stick. That closes his eyeball so he can't see me. All right? Then I can actually sit on him if I like, you know? Yeah. Oh, and there's so no way I'm doing me. that. There's he can't no reach way. me. Hey, he's not going this way. It was right. obvious he was romantically involved with the monster oh. as he writhed around, oh. rubbing oh. himself oh. against oh. the thing. You could see it in both the faces, okay. they had a monge tooth thing going on. And now he was trying to rope me into his sordid affair. Right up me, Ginger. Sit right up me, ass. I wondered if his if wife off? knew. I had to do what he said. Otherwise, he said they were going to beat me with his stick. I felt so violated. And sit right down for me, Smiles. That's it, mate. There we go. Look at that. Right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> After he made me sit on his big, scaly croc, Bruce Baggins took me to the croc's natural habitat. He called it a kitchen, but in actual fact, it was a pond of crocodile soup. So, this is the stump man, Nigel. That's right. Uh, and we're about to show you. You explain. You explain. Yeah. What happens if we just, if you slip over and touch his water? This is what would happen to you. Oh f me! I got him on the bloody head. <laughs> Come on, you bird. Now he's gonna. There he is. See? He pulled his head off. He's like, now he's rolling. He's rolling. There he well, Nigel's done for, isn't he? He's done for, yeah. I don't know if you can notice, but a crocodile managed to remove Nigel's jeans without taking his shoes off. So not only are they aggressive when you come in their kitchen, they're very talented as well. <laughs> After a day of carrying a brown onion in my pants brought on by the fear of the crocodile, I was cream crackered. It was time to return to my hotel, clean up and catch up on some well-deserved hush high. Roy! Roy! It's about the two in the morning. Can't believe racket downstairs. Roy, can you hear that? There's only one thing that gets Roy out of bed at two in the morning, and that's tap dancers. Hold on a second. Unbelievable! Yeah. Oh. Roy, you insensitive bastard! Yeah. We've got to be up at seven tomorrow! It's two in the morning! We stopped filming! Yeah. I don't know what you're laughing at! The sound man, I can't remember his freaking name! You're just taking him on! I love tap I know you do! Shut up, Roy! So far, the third sector of me very brilliant world tour down under was on top. I'd learned how to surf to an elite level of expertise, sat on the croc's back and had a backflash about Olive Valance. Go give me another beer, you fat cow! It was all going very brilliantly, but I was still a little concerned about my business back in the UK. It was time to report home. Security, Paul. All right, uh, Gary, it's Keith. Keith, how are you, old dogger? Eh? Are you getting plenty over there? Plenty of ham sandwich, yeah? Yeah, I'm getting loads. It's gushing. I'm just phoning it to see how business is going. Do you know what I like, me, Keith? I like veins. Big blue veins. I know you do, you twisted twazzock. How's business going? Yeah, everything's all right, but you've no piss spot in here. How am I supposed to have a slash? I've tell you, go down to Nag Z. I'm not going to Nag's head. You have to buy food from there. Well, go buy a freaking sausage roll, then. I'm not buying a sausage roll from Nag's head. You know I only shop at Greg's. Well, apart from toilets, is everything all right? Aye, everything's fine. In fact, everything's gravy. Or should I say, veiny. You what? Big blue veins. Gally! 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 There was no time to worry about our Gary. I had a plane to catch, otherwise I'd miss it. Good day, mates, you flaming drog nogs. Hello, today I'm taking a chartered aeroplane to my next location, that being the Outback. 
Now, this is the aircraft, as you can see, and this is the captain. It's Captain Ben. Thanks for this, Ben. Uh, no worries, Keith. First of all, can you take us through um, some of the peripherals of the aircraft? Sure. It looks like a tit, but don't be fooled. The aircraft is equipped with two, that's two, windmills on either side. Does that mean that the plane is um, solar powered? No. I'm here at what I'm assuming to be the snozzle of the plane, and I've noticed that there's no um, piston, what do they call them? The uh, pist propeller? Propellers propeller. here. Yeah. Isn't that dangerous? Uh, not really. Two's enough for this Wouldn't plane. it be better if we were one here as well? Because I'm sure I've seen on telly when there's been one of these propeller things here. Yeah, some aircraft just have one on the front. Yeah. But this is a twin engine aircraft. Oh, Good these, it's outside. flat. No, this one's an aileron. And, and that's its piston flap. No, no, oh. that's an aileron trim tab. That's a trim tab. And this is the flap on the inside there. Anyone who doesn't know now about planes would have probably thought this was its piston flap, wouldn't they? Maybe. I know. These boys are really stuck on. What are these? They direct the airflow over the wing mm -hmm. to make it better at producing lift. Mm. And the lift is what gets us up in the air. Yes. Now, Ben, this is very perplexing. What is it, a boomerang that an Aborigine has thrown in as you've flown by? No, it looks a bit like a boomerang. But is it an anchor it's... hook for tying down the aeroplane because it's made out of very light metal which enables it to take flight, yeah? It's not a uh, tie down point either, it's actually an antenna. Right, yeah. these are steering wheels, why is there two? So you can have two pilots. Why do you need two pilots? And if you need two pilots, why have we only got one? Because sometimes you don't need two pilots. It, this uh, plane you can fly with one pilot. I've always enjoyed this gauge when I've seen it on telly. It's got a picture of the plane. As you can see, it's a bit different to ours because it's got a spike coming out of it. Ours hasn't got a spike because it's not a fire plane. We're not going to be killing anyone. Um, what's this gauge here about, Ben? Uh, your directional indicator. My directional indicator. Well, I tell you what, we've learnt basics and it sounds pretty easy to me. So let's um, get buckled up before I sweat so much I'm reduced to the size of Prince. <laughs> it's tiny, isn't it? Isn't it tiny? Yeah, Prince, Prince is very tiny. Bro, you stop laughing, it's serious, you dick! <laughs> Once I'd learned the basics of plane flying, it was right easy. It was just like flying a toaster with wings. You just had to keep the thingamajig in the middle of the waxit to keep it steady. After flying for three and a half hours, I arrived in the bush. To be honest, it wasn't as bushy as I thought it might be. I'd been with girls with bigger bushes. The bush count here was very sporadic, far and few and in between. I've come here to Uluru, or Airs Rock, commonly known as Ayers Rock. It's called Ayers Rock because it's a large rock surrounded by air. The more rock, the more air. Bye. It's a big rock. So anyway, I plan to climb Ayers Rock, but unfortunately, the Aboriginals believe that it's sacred ground and the water allow us to climb Ayers Rock. So what we did is we got in touch with in excesses Kirk Pengeely. That's him with glasses on that played saxophone. We thought if he plays a bit of saxophone for him, that'll swing it for us. But oh no, 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 that didn't work. So we went to plan B and we got in touch with Stefan Dennis, AKA, gonna make you feel good, Paul Robinson from Neighbours. He said he might be able to get us to climb the rock, although he's not sure if we'll be able to get us to climb the rock. Stefan couldn't get us to climb the rock, but I thought I'd meet up with him anyway to discuss my new business idea I had. To my surprise, he came a different way to what I thought he might come. Stefan. Jeez. I thought you were going to come that way. Uh, that's, uh, that's a nicer way to come, just trust me. Once we'd established which was the better way to come, we got down to the nitty-gritty of business talk. I was wondering if you'd like to get involved in some of my new business ventures. OK. More cereals these days for kids out there. Yeah. Lucky Charms, Cocoa Pops, Monkey Chips, all of them. Mm. But there's none for adults, is there? So what I'm thinking of is some for adults, and it's called Cereal. Same. Cereal. Cereal. We take, like, pork scratchings, peanuts, put them in a bowl of booze. Booze, I love it. You can serve it at a pub, 
Like if someone's a drinker on the morning, maybe they've rushed out so quick to the pub, they forgot to have the brekkie, they can have brekkie at the pub whilst getting drunk on cereal. <laughs> so would you be interested in being the face of cereal? Yeah, I'd ha probably have to have a redder nose, wouldn't I? Bold well, we can do toss feet it's and yeah. all that stuff on your face. OK. Think about it seriously. Okay, no, 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 no. Stefan agreed to think about my business proposal that I proposed to him. And whilst Robinson Crusoe in his bird Julie showed us how to make spears, I supplied Stefan yeah. with some radical new plotline ideas for neighbours. I'll tell you what I think would be a great idea for neighbours. If um, Paul Robinson got into a situation like um, Superman did and the good and the bad separated and there were two of him, and they both kick the crap out of each other. The, the evil Paul Robinson could take his leg off and beat the good Paul Robinson to death. Oh, I've got a fake one, like yeah. um, Eva Mills. Yeah. Haven't yeah, they? Yeah. And she's evil, isn't she? Yeah, well, see, see? It's obviously the legs. See, yeah. They thought it was the You lose your leg and you go evil. Well, that... I've never met her, but I've just heard bad things about her. We'd better not go into it. <laughs> Julie agreed she was evil too. She was a big McCartney fan and she thought it was terrible how she treated him. So we went outside to chuck some spears and it all got a bit competitive. After I accidentally speared Stefan in the eye, he refused to come and hear me recital thing at the Bushman's Poet Society. There were no sign of Robin Williams. I think that's another Poet Society thing. It was very disappointing, as was the reception of me distinctly brilliant poem. I wrote this poem this morning um, just before I was snoring, I hope it's not boring and starts you all yawning. Um, I'll try and make it exciting. <laughs> what types of exciting? Um, go karting, no. Mountain, mountain biking. Exciting, mountain biking, mountain biking. Um, exciting. <laughs> Shall I make it exciting? Exciting. Exciting. What rhymes? What rhymes with frightening? Um, frightening. Monkey fighting. Some audiences you just can't please, can you? Barrier reefs. The don't come more greater than the great barrier reef. It's quite frankly. The greatestest, hence its name, the Great Barrier Reef. Now, the Great Barrier Reef supports over 30 different species of dolphin, whale, possums, and other underwater orgasms. The more absurd of the species, that being the dwarf minkle whale, giving its name because of its high forehead and its small sausage like fins. Today I've come scuba diving with a bunch of other scuba divers in hope that we catch a glimpse of just some of the aforementioned underwater orgasms. Oh flick it! I said orgasms, I meant orgasms isms, orgasm, it's a sex rush. It's on the top though, come on, stop being messing about. Bye you reefs! <laughs> Underneath the Great Barrier Reef, it was like an underwater oasis with many orgasmsisms shaped like penises and other orgasmsisms shaped like penises, when in actual fact they were just bread filled with noodles. This must be underwater love. Well, that was Australia, and as the Aussies say, it was top bands, I might. I was a spectator in a giant prawn race, a partaker in a dunny race, and a lovemaker to this girl's face. It was ace. So until next time, if I don't see you through a week, I'll see you through a window. Next week on Keith Lemon's Very Brilliant World Tour, I go to Mexico and give Holly Willabilly a few warm truths. I never liked you anyway. You fat dog. I prefer fern cotton. <laughs> I'm going to finish now with a bit of song dedicated to this Australian bunny rabbit. It's the kangaroo. Bright eyes burning like fire. Bright eyes burning like fire. I
for you. Or subscribe and whatever. I don't know what you say.